If you've been on the internet long enough, then you've probably come across these characters. Now, if that was once or twice, you'd probably just scroll away. But eventually, maybe the fifth, sixth, or I don't know, two millionth time, you'd start getting curious about, um, stuff. So who are these characters, and why does one of them keep popping up on my screen? Luckily for you guys, I'm in the mood for finding answers today. The first challenge for me was to find the name of the game. I knew it was going to be difficult, and oh, here it is. That was kind of easy. So I got in game to see if the game is everything it advertises itself to be. The first thing you notice in the game is that it's kind of a novel game, so there's less gameplay. I understood that this was going to be a very story dependent game, so I looked forward to it. There are two acts in the game so far, and I'm gonna be reviewing... <clears throat> and I'm gonna be reviewing each act as it ends. Okay, we're getting a small flashback to two siblings arguing with each other about something. Then we just wake up as a girl. So she is starving. It's time to look for food. I wanna check around the house and that's kind of degrading. Seems like the girl has been stuck here for a while. Hey, I found food in the trash. And... It's a tomato can. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel bad for her. Wait, isn't this the guy I kept seeing in the hentai with this girl? From what I can tell, they're a couple because who calls someone darling without it meaning something more? They're both being kept here intentionally and left to starve. I guess we found ourselves a Swifty here. Who am I kidding? This still sounds better than her music. These two are being quarantined here because they have parasites in them that travel through the water. I guess these two are now infected. I still don't understand why they're being kept here to starve though. What in the incest f they're siblings! Well, I guess their mother abandoned them. She never really came back after they tested positive for the parasites. Considering the way they act around each other, I wouldn't blame her for giving up on them. If I was a parent and saw my kids acting like this with each other, by the time I can stop them, they're probably already on Cornhub, pretending to be half blood. It's the fact that they're always fighting with each other that does it for me. Okay, that's new. This guy seems to be successful at his attempt of summoning a demon. Too bad he couldn't offer anything in return for the summon. I'm pretty sure he's dead, but there's no way they're gonna eat him, right? Okay, this game just took a turn. The two of them just butchering a man's limbs and not giving an emotional crap kind of raises some alarms for me in my head. I mean, it's bad that we're eating a dead guy, but, you know, it could be worse. They could, you know be siblings. Do you know what I've seen on the internet about these two? I swear to god artists have some incredible power in their hands. Okay, so we're getting more insight on that flashback. It took me an hour to realize that Ashley is Lele and Andrew is Andy. So Ashley's friend used to have a crush on Andrew and so Ashley got jealous. So they decided to lock her in a dusty box, leave her there overnight at an abandoned warehouse. Also, did I mention that the kid that they locked has asthma? Does this game get any better? Andrew goes through a panic attack because of his guilty conscience over a dead guy and seems to be seeking some comfort in his sister. By, I mean by his sister. So we're trying to summon the demon that we literally saw killing the guy we ate. I get the idea that these two are not the smartest people. Like, I gotta find some place to hide. Okay, this seems like a good spot I checked out earlier. Hello there. Surprise, motherfucker. Honestly, that went a lot better than I expected. Before I go back to my gameplay, I just wanted to point out how accurate the conversations are in this game to real life. They just talk about everything you can think of. I've skipped a lot of conversations in the game because of how lengthy the video would be if I didn't. Anyways, I'm free! Barging into another person's home like this does not seem like a good idea. But they just barge in anyway. There is no way that- Huh? Um, excuse me, what's the actual fuck? Am I a pretty girl? Oh, well done. You're- you're beautiful! Honestly, I'm not even disturbed. I just wish someone was this jealous for me. Okay, so we're gonna lure this other guy by inviting him over to run a train on her, which is just another Tuesday for them apparently. Are we really threatening this woman? Also, why is she not yelling her lungs out? Oh, stupid! Right, my dumb ass. You know, it makes you wonder how many more times I've done this before. Well, we sell the ward and soul to the devil. Oh, he did! Kill the horny milf in your area. And run off. First things first, what the f- This act is a little too close to being an incest novel, I'll tell you that. There are certain parts in the act that really makes me wonder what kind of freaky sh** these two have done before. And it's not even normal, you can really tell that they like each other like that but won't go forward because of moral reasons. This guy is named Moral Reasons, cause this crazy b is unhinged. She does not have a moral compass whatsoever and it's questionable how I find this slightly arousing in a woman. What? Aside from all the incest, this game feels pretty great. It's just a relaxing game mechanically and the only part in this act where I felt a bit anxious was when the warden was looking for Ashley while I tried to hide. Come here, boy! 
I know it's mostly a novel storytelling game, but damn did the makers of this game do a good job in making the conversations uber realistic. It really does feel like an actual conversation between a couple, again, aside from the incest. The talk that they have about stuff is also uber realistic for their ages. But one thing's for certain, this game really got me curious to play the next act to find out what would happen. Andrew and Ashley are having lunch and she just casually brings up an effort to become a prostitute. It's honestly disgusting how people would want to sell themselves for quick cash and who would even pay for something like that? Oh, never mind. Oh, what the fuck? The game's already over. Bruh. Hey, what's that? They sleep together. Just sleep and nothing else. Oh, so someone's trying to kill us. Well, I gotta get out. And oh, hey, I almost forgot about him. Usually he's just following around like a pet. Yeah, bro, it's probably not a good idea to split up while you got a mark on your head. We're playing as the guy now when we're following a cult member. And I need a passcode. Wait, so there's no way this actually works, right? Okay, I promise I did not look this up online. 666 kind of seemed obvious because it was mentioned before. Also, the Diddy party going crazy. Alright, so the cultists aren't evil. I think. They really can't summon a demon if their life depended on it, but Ashley did it on her first try and that's also rather concerning. I'm gonna try to talk to some people here. Okay, that's enough talking. It's almost menacing how she's just waiting there in the middle of the night so calmly, while a killer is on the loose. Well, the hitman pulled up. There's no way we're going back to the... Running away is for cowards. We must head back. I'm pretty sure that the killer is in the closet. And why is she talking funny? And what does frolic even mean? A playful and lively movement or activity. Oh, they wanna play some game in the park. While hidden in the bushes. In the middle of the- Oh, I get it. They're gonna have some- Oh, would you look at the time? It's to do some mighty frolicking in the shrubbery with the good lady. Bro, the way they talk is just so cringe. Wait, I found something. Hey, yo, what the fuck? I mean, he could still use it if he turns it inside out. Wait, isn't that the same thing? I'll just pick this one. I got a Glock in my room. Okay, they were in fact not the same thing. I could have saved those bullets. Well, it's too late for that now. We're stealing the killer's car and- Wait, is this crazy bitch already planning to rob her parents and kill them? I can see how this game holds the reputation that it has. It's pretty surprising for me to see a genuinely realistic argument in a game that usually happens between real couples. This game is a little too specific. God, I really hope that this isn't describing someone's actual life as a game. So we made it in the house. Time to do the robbing and rob all over the place. Their parents abandoned their children and thought they died and they didn't even even bother to do a funeral or look for a body. Every time a new scenario is presented to me and I sit down on a table with it, a new worst situation kind of presents itself and flips the whole table over. Is it just me or is the mom kinda bad? Just me? Oh, okay. So we're having dinner. <laughs> So the mom just walked in on us talking. Bruh. No wonder they left their asses. We're dreaming now and baby Ashley is following us around. We need a candle and- What the f- No, no. I'm just gonna do what I would actually do in this position. Who even is this? So this was Andrew's girlfriend, huh? Honestly, I don't ship them. And no, I don't ship them either if that's what some of you sickos out there are wondering. Okay, so we're continuing the flashback again. Oh, sh- that just took a deeper turn. Gotta swipe the evidence now. Just another Friday for them. If some of you folks out there still think she's dreamy, then just know that she's blackmailing Andrew to do all the dirty work for her because she'll spill if he doesn't do what she says. That being said... It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! Okay, so Andrew's waking up and whoa, Ashley got a really nice smile. Their mom caught them talking and... Bro, what you hiding there? Damn, bro, damn, damn! Let me process! Okay, so Ashley told Andrew to look for a rope to tie her mother with and I'm just gonna dip and run away. So we're looking for rope now and I can't find it and I'm assuming it's in that closet. Wait, 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 wait! I like how the father's first instinct is to look for the mother after his 20-something year old son tells him he wants to screw himself. So that's what he looks like. I can see where Ashley got her eyes from. We have to decide whether or not we can trust Andrew. I mean, I'm the one making all the choices, so... The mom's trying to convince us to dump our sister, which seems pretty reasonable, but nah, let's see where this goes. The way this game is going, I am very certain that the mom sold their children to an organ harvesting organization. Huh? What the fuck? Great, at least they didn't suffer long. They're not dead yet though. I think they might wake up. Maybe Ashley and Andrew will take care of them. 
Washing my parents down the drain while making it seem like a romantic moment with my sister. What a wonderful day to regret having a conscience. You cannot make this shit up. They're eating their parents now. They're sleeping together now. What are these dolls? Why does it keep falling off? Oh, I get it. They're eye colors. The pink one is Ashley and the green one is Andrew and that's their parents. Oh, we're basically going back through the whole story. Parents go as sacrifice. The purple plush is the little girl and the yellow one is Andrew's ex. She's a little too fond about her brother, huh? Yes! They seem to like each other a lot. Okay, this just makes sense. I can tell I'm making an important choice, but this goes here and that goes there. Pfft, how bad can it be? Game is game. We dumping our parents' remain in the ocean now, and I'm glad this act is over. The story is relatively simple. Andrew and Ashley are two siblings who call each other Andy and Lele, an abbreviation of their names. Ever since they were kids, Ashley had always been very jealous for her brother and always hated how he was a woman's man. One day, an unnamed friend of Lele told her that she liked her brother Andrew. Angered, she decided to get rid of her. She emotionally manipulated her brother to convince him to play along, making it seem like a little game. So, you two trapped the asthma suffering girl in a box in an abandoned warehouse, leaving her to her inevitable demise. Andrew and his, well, <clears throat> sibling, are abandoned by their mother because she knew that the two had something to do with the little girl's disappearance. So she cashed in their life insurance by forging their death certificate so she can move on to a lavish life. The two of them acquired a parasite through the water they drank, which appeared to be deadly. So it leaves the two of them to rot there without food, being quarantined. Starving, the two become desperate for food and notice that their neighbor, who happens to be a cultist, die while trying to make a deal with the demon. They eventually eat parts of his limbs to avoid starvation. In doing so, they notice the warden knocking on their dead neighbor's door. Afraid of being caught, they try to hide the evidence, but Ashley gets caught and Andrew ends up unaliving him. The door unlocked, the two then decide to leave the apartment. Both of the siblings notice that there is another warden on the second floor and if they wanted to get out, then they would have to get rid of him too. Andrew and Ashley find a lady living in room 302 and figure that she exchanges some, well, favors with the other wardens often. Andrew gets an idea of summoning the demon and luring the warden holding the lady hostage. They sell his soul and thanks to his very dear demon communicating sister over here, they manage to run off. But not before she makes a deal with the demon to give them a small glance into the future, in exchange for the warden's soul. After they escape, Ashley sees a vision because of the deal she made with the demon which inevitably saves both of their lives. By showing her a dream of the hitman killing both of them in their sleep, they outsmart the assassin and using his car we drive to the parents' home to rob them. On the way there, Ashley Ashley sees another dream, but this time she was the one who was being summoned. The demon wanted to make another deal for more soul. The two reach the home of their loving parents and eventually get caught. They buy some time before deciding to sell their souls, after which Ashley mercilessly slaughters her parents. The two of them get another vision of the future. This depends on what you decide in this room. After which they drive near a bridge to dump their parents' remains. Second thing second. What the f I don't really play novel games very often and after playing this one, I don't really think I'll be playing any for a while. This game is pretty messed up, but I guess that's what makes this so wonderful to play. The entire story is just outright absurd. The honest genres of this game is incest, romance, murder documentary, satanic, and it manipulates you to be a satan- Okay, maybe not that one. The visual art is clean and sharp, yet simple. It makes me feel something. Jokes aside, there is a wide variety of music used in the game, and it subconsciously controls how you feel about a certain situation no matter how bad it is. For example, here you've tied up the parents and you're about to sell their souls, yet the game makes the whole situation feel funny and lighthearted. Without the music, it just doesn't feel the same. The soundtracks are used very effectively. I also personally have a soft spot for games that let you choose your own story, similar to the game Detroit. It makes me feel as though there aren't any right endings. The choices you make is what makes your story, which I find incredibly deep, because it allows you to feel as though you're the one in the particular situation, or at least that's how I like to see it. Even though the game is kind of a 2D chibi game, when it comes to gameplay, it's very detailed. Notice how Ashley just always sits on a smaller chair, even in her dreams. Now notice that this only happens when she's with the entire family, but not when she's alone with Andrew, slightly suggesting that she does not fit in the family, but does so only with him. There are similar parts such as this, but I don't want this video to be that long. I would rate this game a 9 out of 10. If I haven't spoiled the game for you all the way yet, then I suggest you try it out, and I really look forward to playing the next chapter when it comes out, so subscribe please and you'd win.